Welcome back, everyone, to the Renegade 3v3 Tournament Recap. I remain your host, Dominic, and we are on to the finals. So this is going to be Team Pluck versus Team 400, and it's going to be starting out on, Ra on Red Comet. This is a best of three. So, of course, whoever wins takes two matches to win. So whoever gets two, then wins. Let's go! Rather basic explanation of best of three. So, for Team Pluck, we have Fire Pluck going for Rover Assembly... Izzeride going for air, as they have been thus far, and Dynathron going for tanks. Again, seems to be a pattern there. On the other hand, Rav going for tanks, Manu going for hovercraft, and 400 going for Cloakie. So again, we are going to see an, another attempt at a mace rush off hovercraft, though given the way that Red Comet's starting location is basically like here, not much of a proxy mace, so there's time, actually plenty of time, for anyone over on Team Block to stop that. We saw last time that a mace rush is moderately effective, but three or four maces as an assault group mid-game is game-winning. So I'm not sure how that's going to pan out, ultimately. At the same time, we just have kind of standard harassment forces coming out from Rav and coming out from Daimfreund. Overall, this isn't too unusual. The mace isn't even that unusual, honestly, at this point. It's just one of those things that is not as typical. But yeah, it's, again, go for the mace rush, force them to go for skirmishers, and then go in with the raiders. Considering that the rest of the team has gone for raiders, that's actually pretty smart. Because, I mean, we're going to get the shields going for raiders. I don't know, there's no shields. What am I saying? There's no rogues. Hey, that actually could work really well, come to think of it. I mean, you know, apart from the fact that the mace is now forced to come back home to try to stop these scorches from doing a lot of damage and get rid of the Manus Commander. Which they won't. Manus Commander is fine. It's upgraded with machine gun and has a load of support. But still... The mace did end up going back, and that did end up buying quite a bit of time for Fireplug and his ride. I think his ride is the one that's primarily going to be benefiting from that, because they don't have a lot of anti-mace forces yet. They needed to build up those ravens, and now they're probably good. I mean, the ravens could still do with some repairs, but yeah, they just need to get those built up. A couple ravens are enough to get rid of the mace. You only need two. So, with that... It's not too hard for Team Pluck to get themselves into a position that will allow them to stay in the game. On the other hand, Team 400 expanding. Rav just getting those southern expansions. Holding them reasonably securely, while at the same time, Dimefrain doesn't even have all the expansions here. They lost the Metal Extractor right on the left side of the base. Didn't really build off that. And again, there's that Mace going down to the Ravens, as expected. So, like I said, Mace isn't a great starting choice. It's not a bad choice to force your opponents to do something. Which now has been responded to by building the flails to respond to the ravens, but again, that's... I don't know, losing a mace... It's 400 metal, it's not the worst thing in the world, but it's still a fair amount of metal. That's most of your starting metal, actually, at least in a 1v1 situation. Ah, well. At any rate, we do have... Actually, the reaver coming in here? Is that seriously going to be coming? Are you seriously going forward with that 400? That reaver is not going to be doing too well, but... Hey, at least it pushes back the fencers, if nothing else. At the same time, though, Dimefroid having a bit of a field day here. Nothing really stopping them from destroying all these metal extractors. The Blitz has taken a fair amount of damage, but the Picket and Kodachi that were trying to stop them are dead. Oh, on top of another Blitz coming in here. Oh, they can get rid of the Welder! I mean, it'll be tough because Welders do have guns. But if that Welder could be taken out, the first Blitz should be able to knock it down to... Oof, never mind. Take the three or four Blitz so shots to nail it, and that would be too many. The Blitz would die in the process, so, okay, fair enough. That Welder gets to live. And that's why Welders have guns, so that they don't just die to harassment. Ooh, at the same time, the Halberd... The Halberd, no! Close up! Ah, that Halberd could have survived that. That Halberd had been micro to close up. It would have lived, but it did not. Man, it must have been distracted by keeping this flail alive. Which is not gonna happen, either. In fact, is that a proxy? No, that's Manu. Mano's own pick it just was dealing a lot of damage to themselves. Or to their own flail, which kind of sucks. But, oh well. Okay, Ogre's coming up again. Scouting is fine. Like, that's the thing. The scouting on Team Pluck has been perfectly fine. Dying from seeing just firing off orders, telling them, Hey, by the way, Izzeride, you've got the Ravens. Go kill that thing. Because there isn't a whole lot of anti-air. Now that the flail's killed, there's a Razor being built up, but nothing else. So... Oh, okay, there's a Razor and the Cop and the Etten, so yes, there are options. But still, get a couple of these Ravens in here, and they should be able to take care of most things being built up. And getting rid of the Ogre is a priority. I don't know why they're going for the Halberds. The Halberds are a trap! 
Stop going for the halberds. You're just going to get yourself killed. That's what I mean. The halberds can generally survive ravens if they're not getting directly attacked. So, or sorry, if they're not attacking themselves. So, yeah, going for the halberds with ravens is a great way to lose ravens. At the same time, though, this is the Blitz Assault I was talking about before. Just stun out the Welder. Get both Blitzes on that Welder. There we go. Now the Welder is trapped. Oof. Almost. That's still fine. A Blitz for a Welder is a worthy trade. That is so worth it for how much that Welder cannot do anything, how much this can't be rebuilt. Yeah, the Blitzes are more expensive, but just the lack of being able to rebuild that Metal Extractor, especially with Dying Throne on their doorstep, possibly being able to take those Metal Extractors for themselves, that could be huge. As it is, though, Team 400 does have an economic advantage, so it's quite important that those assaults happen. It's also kind of important that metal extractors like this one over here get taken. Actually, there's quite a few metal extractors here that could be taken that haven't been. I'm a little surprised at that, honestly. There haven't been any masons sent down there to deal with it, or cranes, or whatever else. Just take these metal extractors. I mean, Fireplux up front, they've got their commander, and they've got this one line of expansion, but they haven't really built around that. And that's putting the Team Pluck at a fairly large disadvantage. The Crane finally coming in here to build up some Metal Extractors. That's good, because they need that. Like, that is desperately needed by Team Pluck right now. Well, that and more energy, because they're starting to excess Metal pretty hard. And again, the more they excess Metal, the more that Team 400 is able to build up an advantage in units. And as a result, the more that Team 400 is able to just deal damage. Right now, Team Pluck mainly is getting along the fact that they've, de they've destroyed two... Two or three thousand more metal than their opponents. They've doubled their opponent's damage or opponent's attrition. But that's only gonna last so long, especially with units like this Raven, or sorry, the Phoenix get out in front and just getting killed by razors. There's not much to be gained from doing that. I, I get why that was happening, trying to get rid of some of the raiders in advance, but that's not gonna help much. So yeah, overall, the team team four hundred, they're losing more units, but they're managing to build up units at a much faster rate, and that's gonna be a problem for Team Pluck very shortly. And I'm really surprised that there hasn't been more focus on expansion. Like, there's some focus, yes, there's, I mean, sort of, kind of, maybe, by something. Oh, yeah, by, by this mason over here that's more focused on building up more power, which, again, is relevant, but at this point, they got enough power. They're fine for power. I think that might be wind. No, it's solar-based. Wind's actually not, it's doing okay right now, but not great. So, mostly that's solar, but not enough. However, Manu does lose their commander. That's a reasonably good counterattack blow. Dying Friend also, however, going to lose their commander. Ooh, are they? No, managing to escape underground. Dying Friend digging themselves a safety pit. But they're also kind of stuck behind enemy lines at this point. And again, this is what I was talking about. We have the Mace Assault. We have the Ogres as well. The Bombers are coming in to try to stop it, but they're only going to be able to do so much. And that so much is probably not going to be enough. So with that, all that can really be done is try to hold the line with what exists, because there's not a whole lot being constructed. Like I said, the Western team, Team Block, doesn't have a whole lot of metal. They're mostly focusing on building up some energy in the backyard, and that's fine, but they're good for energy. They need to use that build power on units. They need to get themselves in a position where they can actually build up more forces. And the Ravens are not doing so hot. The, the Ogres are destroying them. That's the thing. That's kind of why the Ogres are priority, because they are pretty effective anti-air. Like, both Ravens down! That's the thing. The Ravens are going down fast. The Eastern Team team 400 is getting their attrition back up just by nailing those Ravens. And the more important thing is that because those Ravens are going down, the Maces have more room to play. Well, Maces and Halberds, really. I mean, this Mace, yeah, it's going to take some damage, but they have a Quill right there. They can heal with the Mace if they wanted to. Now, I would recommend they do so. And on top of that, Dying Friends losing almost everything here. Their commander is in a pit that they cannot dig themselves out of. Their only saving grace right now is the fact that Team 400 does not have any air forces. They have no Ravens and thus cannot send something that can knock, that can just drop down a bomb into Dianfrone's base. And Dianfrone is able to get some reclaim off their position. Which is kind of clever. Because like I said, there's not much that can be done to stop Dianfrone's commander right now. I mean, there sort of is. There sort of is. You could either terraform it back or you could just set a halberd at the very edge. Something like that. I mean, this Kodachi is trying to, but again, that commander is really far down there. So doing so is not going to be easy. So yeah, at this point, the only thing that could really do the trick would be bombers. And that's not happening anytime soon. But at the same time, it's also not really that important. Actually, no, it is that important. Never mind. That reclaim is huge. The reclaim is actually one of the few things that's keeping Team Pluck in this game right now, economically speaking. Well, that and the fact that they actually have managed to build up the expansions I was talking about earlier. So there they go. 
that's that's what I wanted to see from Team Pluck. And while that is going on, though, Team 400 is reclaiming a bunch themselves, getting the caretakers up, getting a few quills as well, and getting more static metal extractors. So, really, even with reclaim taken into account, Team 400 is way ahead. There are no problems there whatsoever for them building up. But this is a reasonably strong position on either side. The main weakness I see for Team Pluck is the south side. The main strength, on the other hand, is the fact they have a pretty good position to start getting some kind of assault coming in the north side. Like, the Ravagers coming in here, the Razors aren't going to stop them. The Lotuses might, but, you know, get twice as many Ravagers as this. Then push in, start ripping apart everything on 400's base. Possibly get to their factory in the back lines, and there's not much to stop them. They're, they don't have mobile forces. Like, Team 400's main weakness right now, they don't have air. They have a really strong ground force, but they have no control over the skies. All they have are a few ogres that are keeping the ravens from building up in number. But the ravens are still dealing some damage. They're still getting rid of units here and there, and still producing problems. And of course, sooner or later, a Cyclops will be built up, but it looks like that's not really a priority. The bigger priority right now, for at least for Team 400, is just setting up, getting the reclaim fields... Getting as much static economy as they can and pushing into Dying Freund's base because there's no commander there, so why not? There are, however, welders. So the welders can at least operate as that kind of frontline assaulty worker, but even then, it's. It's kind of it. So, with that and with Firepluck attacking in the north, that was the one thing. I'm sorry, Firepluck, that's 400 attacking in the north, and that was the one thing I thought would be the Team Pluck's strength is that northern base, but no, the Knights doing a fine job tearing apart the wall of solar collectors. Not a huge deal yet, but, you know, deal with enough of them. That will destroy the economy. Though I believe there's a few... Yeah, there's a fusion plant right there. That's what's going on. So I'm thinking, no, that got 120 energy. That's not... That's not solar. Like, that'd be 60 solar plants. I would notice that. But no, that is instead fusion plants. But still... Zeus is, or the Knights coming in here. Even with the Knights coming in here, though, it's not enough. But Knight Ronin combined! That is a fairly good, decent chunk of damage here. But even then, it's just a matter of can these can these Ravagers deal the damage they need to in time? Because the Ronin are chipping away at them. But at the same time, they are tough enough that it shouldn't be a major problem. I mean, same time, the Halberds are getting in place, and that is giving me a problem. The Halberds and Maces, that's that's where the Ravagers go to die. Like I said, this section was the main assault. This is the assault vector that I could see working for Team Pluck. It's going along here. But that's not happening right now, because Team Pluck, I mean, they're more concerned about the south side. They're more concerned about the center. And Manu 12 is putting a huge amount of pressure on that on both of them. So right now, it's just a matter of Team 400 building up all this metal, using all this metal, turning it into a lot of units. And while they are still losing the attrition game, they haven't lost it by any given rate. They're 3,000 metal behind, but they've been 3,000 metal behind this entire game. So they've actually been keeping pace since basically the beginning. I got them the first few opening engagements. Team... Team 400 has not been losing that. They've been trading evenly this entire time while maintaining a larger army or maintaining a larger economy. So yeah, Team 400, just a matter of time before they push in. And there's that push. Bit two prong. Small harassment force on the bottom side with a couple Kodachis and an Ogre. But the top side, you have all the Halberds. This is the main assault force. This is the force that Team 400 is trying to use to win the game. Like, if this works, that is going to be it. Team 400 should be able to turn this into a win if they manage to make it work. Getting rid of the... Ooh, getting rid of the Phoenix. Get... Pushing the Raven back. And now it's just a matter of sweeping down, sweeping south. Ooh, the Cyc... Uh, to get rid of the Cyclops, that will be the deciding element of the match. Get rid of the Cyclops, game over. If they don't get rid of the Cyclops, it's a problem, but they have the Halberds. The Halberds will be able to just tank that Cyclops low beam. Still, though, are there Cyclopses coming in here? And the answer is yes, there's a Cyclops coming in here from Rav. So there is a chance for Salt here, and also at the same time... Cyclops is not on the north side of the map. The Cyclops is at the south side of the map. So just go to the north side of the map. It's exactly what Manu 12 is doing. So they're thinking, and they might as well. The Crab, however, is also in here for his ride. Ooh, went for spiders. I'm saying ooh a lot. I'm easily impressed, apparently. But yeah, they're going for the spiders, and that's not a bad choice. Get that in there. But even then, the Cyclops has actually already been terraformed out of commission or sorry, that's not Cyclops, it's the Minotaur. The Cyclops is further back. Cyclops is dead! That's the main problem there. The Halberds did their job, got rid of the Cyclops. The Maces, unfortunately for them, are still having a bit of a hard time getting rid of the Minotaurs, but they are getting rid of the Minotaurs. 
They're basically taking care of this entire front line. And same time, Madden 12 is still building them up. Still building up lances. Still actually building up a few lances here. That should be enough. Lances will get rid of the crabs. Get rid of any additional cyclopses that get built, which I believe there are. Yep, there's another cyclops. And again, Rav Cyclops is three minutes away from being done, surprisingly. They have 120 metal, but I guess most of the metal is going into Mana 12's constructions. So once that's all set up, then they'll be fine. Oh, that actually, no. They're going into anti-air. Going to try to take care of all this air control that was the case for Team Pluck. Which no longer really is the case. There's some ravens up, but Team Pluck has not managed to get more than that. two or three ravens at a time actually active. I think this is the most this is the most ravens they've had at once. Three. How often do you see just three ravens in the mid to late game of a team game? That's how effective the anti-air has been coming in, and not even one lance getting hit. Like Team 400's anti-air. It's just the air control. They haven't had any air units themselves, but their own air control has been on point this entire match. And that should be enough to give them the match. Now that they have air of their own, just completely securing the air control, they can just jump in with any units they want because the main trump card against them is, of course, the Raven. Things like Dominatrices, for example. The Raven's not there to stop it because the, there's too much. The Raptors can stop it. The Razors can stop it. Hell, the Penetrators can stop it. So they might as well just go in with everything. Heck, if they can get a Dominatrix over to the Crab and take that out, that could be really effective. Or just kill the crab when the crab is... Crab is moving. I mean, that crab picked the wrong time to move. That's like... Th I think it's 3,000 damage. Yeah, 3,000 damage with no armor stopping it. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Oh, Domi... Is it gonna go for it? No, the Dominatrix is still reloading. It cannot take out the Cyclops. Oh, that's gotta hurt. At the same time, though, the amount of damage being dealt on the north side with the raven... The sheer number of ravens coming in here. Like I said... Izzerite's not been able to get more than two or three ravens at a time. 400 just in the span of a minute gets about six of them. Heck, every single one of them is taking only a few seconds to build. That's most of... That's most of where the money is going here, but there's 112 metal. So yeah, getting rep ravens. Not a real problem there. They're only 300 metal each. That's like two, like three or four seconds per raven. Yeah, I'm not really sure if Team Pluck has any options here just for the amount of economy their opponents have. And really, that just came down to the fact that Team Pluck, they they took a fair amount of economy at the beginning, but they didn't take enough. Like I said, this expansion here, they didn't take for a while, and so they couldn't really snowball that. And of course, soon, like I said, Team Pluck and Team 400 for a long time were keeping parity on their attrition, but Team Pluck was not building as much. They didn't have enough of an economy, so while Team 400 was not, they were still not getting ahead in the attrition, they were still getting ahead in army value and army size. And ultimately, that just snowballed into what we see right now, which is 120 metal, and they can build basically anything in the game in about three or four seconds. So with that, that game one goes to Team Pluck. Sorry, not Team Pluck. It goes to Team 400. The band units. It goes to Team 400, taking it quite handily, though admittedly mostly due to just having a constant but very slight but constant metal economy and or metal usage advantage just never were behind on metal always slightly but never behind on metal and so army value yeah was kind of even went back and forth i mean the cyclops actually provided a fairly scary time but again there was just too much space for it to cover so while the armor value was high it doesn't give the whole story the fact that that cyclops is only in one part of the map all the rest of the hover units that manu had could go wherever the heck they wanted so yeah, that was that was a good example of why it's important to take all the expansions you can, especially on a macro map like this. Now, the next game... <sighs> the next game is going to be on mini super speed metal. I'm sorry, it's... Yeah, it's it's gonna be... It's, it's gonna be that. So, we'll... I won't make a break, we'll just... Switch over. Yeah, Mini Super Speed Metal. We saw that earlier today. Not sure why it was played twice. But maybe we'll see something different happen. I don't know. I mean, Dynefreund, who is on Team Pluck, saying that it was the best game of the tournament. So, I'm actually kind of excited. I want to see how this is the best game of the tournament. What happens? What makes this be a thing? Because 
this game on this map of all maps I like I said I've never seen any speed metal games before and now I've seen two And I think that might be enough. I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. So we have Dimefriend and Firepluck being very forward. Firepluck with jump bots. Dimefriend going for the Hovercraft factory. While in the backyard, we have Israide, of course, going for the air plant and for the metal extractor. While at the same time, Air is being 400's domain while Man is going for the spiders. And Rav wants to make shield bots the, the frontline unit of choice. So again, I expect we're going to see... Okay, more. It's into wind. So metal into quick wind, into fusion most likely. And again, it's kind of who gets the first fusion and then who starts smashing the fusions. That's what matters. I was all asking actually who got the first fusion was not the winner. Like the fact that the wind generators were up and providing enough power to provide essentially parity with the fusion plants for a little while did end up doing a lot more good than just trying to get the fusion plants early. So again, it's kind of the game of chicken of who can get the most non-fusion power before going for fusion. Because it also means their economy is less dependent on that fusion power working. Or, or rather, not being blown up, I should say. Not, not working so much as simply being intact. At the same time, this jack, though, it might just completely destroy that calculus. We're not going for long-range artillery fights here. No, we're going for melee assaults. Right up front in the Shieldbot factory with nothing with enough firepower to kill it in time. That jack... Is it going to go for the power? It looks like it's going for the power. It's not going to be able to do more than kill the factory, but hey, it kills the factory. That's something. So that might do the trick. Anyway, wind picking up. Or at least Team 400 is taking the advantage. They turn that into a fusion reactor, even as they lose the shield back factory, and thus most of the front line. Fusion reactor also coming up for Team Pluck. And it's a little bit behind. Team Pluck has the advantage on that. Team Pluck, did they have any solar plants built up? No, but... No, they did. They did. Fire block over the solar plants. Good choice, because people just pointed out in chat that wind is not the best energy for this. It's cheap, but you're gambling on it being around. And the thing is, that gamble does not pay off when your opponent goes for solar, because now your opponent has solar. And with your opponent having solar, they don't worry about wind. If the wind dies for you, it doesn't die for them, which is why we're going to see Team Pluck get a fairly large energy advantage, and as a result, get a fairly large build power advantage. Thankfully, though, for... Team 400, they got that fusion reactor done in time. The wind happened to pick up just in time for them to be able to build that back up. But that was very close. Of course, the question is when we get a second fusion plant. We are getting some solar built up, which is nice to see. That some stable economy built up. But now they have fusion plant. Well, I don't see the point of going for solar as much. Just other than the fact that I suppose if you have a good decentralized power infrastructure, you don't have to worry about getting nuked so much. But with the Firewalkers coming in, that might not be the main concern. The Firewalkers could just tear everything else apart. Or the Phoenixes, that, that as well. Could rip apart the fields of power. Where So that's the thing, is you either get like, Ravens or Missiles, that gets rid of the Fusion. Or you have to get Phoenixes, which gets rid of the Wind. Bit of a tough choice. But either way, Team Pluck does have a 50 energy advantage. But there's the Phoenixes getting rid of a lot of the Wind Generators. Not quite enough to get rid of... Oof, not going to get rid of the power, but does get rid of all the caretakers, meaning the air control is going to be very strongly in 400 favor for the next couple minutes as they rebuild the caretakers. And honestly, there's not a whole lot being used with the energy. So they got 150 energy and no build power to use it with. Well done, 400. I mean, at this point, it's still an advantage to Team Pluck. They still have a position where they aren't really that vulnerable to being attacked. Uh, this center bridge is, well, it's not really vulnerable for Team Pluck. But, the Phoenix is coming in and dealing that damage was still enough to basically open things up. And even though Team Pluck does have a fairly well-defended area, the Mace is not enough of a threat, and... Di what the heck? Oh, the Fusion Reactor being taken down by... What took it down? That wasn't the... Crap, not sure what I took that down. It wasn't any bombers. It might have been... Going by the explosion, I think it... No, they don't have jump bots. Oh, there it is. There's the missile silo. Thing. What just broke that? Missile silo! That's what broke it. Hence the fire as well. I'm clearly very tired. But yeah, nice to see the Inferno. Getting rid of the caretakers as well. And that should do it. Because, yeah, whoever gets the missile silo first tends to win this. But, I don't know. At the same time, the Raven's coming in and getting rid of the fusion plants on the other side. So, 
the advantage is not that clear cut. And actually, what's the what's the range of this thing? Oh, we can only hit the front lines. Okay, so all the backline fusion plants being built up at Israel, they're fine. What oh, about dying for an Israel squad? Those are actually going to be perfectly intact. The missile silo cannot deal with them. So, this isn't entirely a lost, lost position for Team Pluck. In fact, with all the Ravens coming in here, they've managed to equalize the power reasonably well, and that's, that's good. That's what they need to do. This Jack coming in here from Fire Pluck will not be able to accomplish much of anything, unfortunately. It's got too much resistance. Honestly, Team Pluck should probably get Missile Saddler of their own, maybe go in for something in the back lines, maybe Striders. I'm not, no, Striders would be a bad idea. Striders would get killed by the Nuke Saddler. Maybe get a Missile Saddler of their own. Because at this point, Team Pluck... I mean, they're managing to get Ravens in there reasonably well. It's just a matter of time before enough defenses get built up for Team 400 that it's no longer a problem. Not to mention the fact that Ravens are still coming on the back lines. Or it could theoretically come on the back lines in favor of Team 400, but no, not yet. And that's another fusion plant down. I mean, the Ravens might go in the process, but that's a fusion plant along with several wind generators down, so Team 400 massively behind in terms of energy. They should be able to get some revenge here, but again, it's only so much because the front line's no longer the relevant point. The missile silo is up for Team Pluck, so Team Pluck could still win this. And if they do, we go into a game three. Because yeah, this back line, like this missile silo being as far back as it is, means it cannot win the game on its own. A missile silo up here could probably help, but of course that would mean it very vulnerable to Ravens, which would kind of defeat the purpose, but maybe that's the way to go. Build a missile silo up here and then use that tear everything else apart, because if you do that, then you get enough... Yeah, if you do that, then it's in range. Like, built around here, it could hit the back line here, tear apart everything. And that would be enough. Like, rip apart the... Well, the Roma Society, rip apart the, the fusion plants, rip apart the caretakers, because yeah, the front line is open. So, ground forces trying to come in could theoretically do so, but that's not a thing that really happens on speed metal, so I don't expect that to happen. Let's... Not part of the match. The match is an artillery match. It's It's gotten to an artillery match, or at least it was, but the missile silo is kind of useless. So, really, it's a one-way artillery match. Well, that and the bombers. Again, this is basically DEFCON 0K style. You have your bombers, you have your missile silos, you don't really have much else. Could, theoretically, you could have ships. Like, build a reef or something there. Nuclear submarine! Throw the nuclear submarine in, why not? It won't, it obviously won't work. That won't build up in time. Although, Thresher... Ooh, Thresher in the front lines. Is that going to be... Oh, okay. So building a bunch of anti-air in the front lines to completely negate any bombers coming in on this side. Not a bad idea. At the same time, more attempted fusion reactors being destroyed by Aeos's. Actually, okay, Aeos, that looked like it was a, a Wyvern. But, no. And actually, that's... Coming through the wreckage, we see that was a bunch of wind generators. Not the missile silo. The missile silo was pretty well protected and very well repaired. Yeah, Inferno coming in here to take out this force. Oh no, that's an Aos, my bad. What the? Shockley? Huh, interesting. Not sure why they went for the Shockley there. What I think was a Shockley. I mean, there's. I don't think it was a Quake. Oh no, was it? Wait, no, hang on. No, that wasn't. That might have been a quake, but it was in the wrong position, because a quake would be a really good idea right about now. Use a quake to even things out, or the inferno, that, that works too. But I'm thinking use a quake to get rid of the terraforming, and then use the AOS to get rid of the missile silo, which I don't know if they can, because I think the missile silo is actually out of range. Yeah, their missile silo is out of range. Oops. Bit of a shame, that. But yeah, the missile silo, it's too far away. Yeah, where's the range of the missile silo? Come on, give me the range of the missile silo. I want to show this off. Why can't you show me a range of missile silo? Oh, they are going for the quake. Okay, so they do, they do have that. Actually, I was wrong. The missile silo does have the range. My bad. Or, no, hang on. I can't even tell what the range is of things anymore. 
Missile silo is too far away. Oh, right, I didn't have select missiles in this one. And the missiles aren't even constructed, so I have no idea what the range is. Well, crap. At the same time, the raven's coming in here, causing loads of problems on top of the inferno. That just means there's no easy way for Team Prime to really build up. And Team Fluck, I should point out, has four times the metal right now. Like, they have so much metal. Going for Big Bertha's, there we go. Get those endgame units that no one ever builds. That's what speed metal is for. Not for this intelligent artillery play. Although, admittedly, I do appreciate the intelligent artillery play. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, there is out of range. Okay. The Quake's in range enough to hit that, and that's exactly what it did. Knock down the terraforming. But, still, Big Bertha is up. And that should be somewhat effective. How large, how big is its range? Okay, that is full map range. Yeah, that that is that is probably game. Big Bertha can basically destroy everything at this point. It's inaccurate, but it's big enough, it doesn't even really matter. And there's that Quake coming in here. Leveling off the entire area. And that should mean basically death for everything behind, what was behind that, what was that hill, now is nothing. Oof, not going for apparently the splash damage off the missile silo there because it should be in range, but I think, I think this one isn't quite in range. Uh, the Aos is fired. It can... Oh, it could have hit the Mrs. Silo. Mrs. Silo's dead, though. And at this point, the Halberd's coming in here just to finish things off. This ground force... Like, once the ground forces are in, that's game. Like, that's the speed metal apparently works, is that if the ground forces get into your base, you've already lost. And that is going to be apparently it. Team 400 throws in the towel. And that is the second game of the finals on, on speed metal. Because why not... So yeah, that works. Anyway, that was, I think, a more apt demonstration of what speed metal is. As the chat points out, fusion plant surrounded by all the artillery you can make. Yep, that's pretty much it. That's that's the game. I think if it lasted any longer, I might have actually seen some silencers. And we have singularity reactors too. So it almost would have worked, but then silencers have a three minute minimum time between nukes. So probably not. No shinies, I'm afraid. That's more free for all. All right, so that was map two. Map three is ravaged. Map three is much more sensible. Let's go to map three now because I don't really want to see map two anymore. I think I've had enough speed metal forever. So ravaged is, of course, more of that cliffy play. I expect, considering that Easy red has gone for air, they're going to keep going for air. Probably the air, spider, tank, I'm thinking. <laughs> oh, Dive Friend. Dive Friend saying that map 3 was boring. That's the, the map we're going to be watching in a sec. That was boring. Come on, Dive Friend. Not that bad. Anyway, now that that's up, I mean, we can actually get to it. Yeah. So much setup. This is why. Oops. My bad. Ignore that. Let's get to the game. Okay. Let's go. Ravaged. So, 400 is on spiders. Okay, jump out for Rav and Manu, I guess, going. Okay, forward hovercraft. Possibly we're going to see the same kind of mace approach as last time. Israid going for air, unsurprisingly. Fireplug going for shields. And Dimefront doing the same thing they did last time. Going over to the eastern side of the map. Probably building up a proxy tank factory. Is that te That seems to be the way things go. Oh, yeah. Ravage. I like Ravage, though, Dimefront. Dimefront saying, I probably casted 100 games in this map. Yes, I have. Because I really like this map. I like playing on this map. Or at least I did. I, mean, I, still, like, I still like it. I like this map. It's, yeah, it is, I guess, not the most gimmicky map, like Speed Metal, but it's a, it's a pretty good map. It's not the best map, but it's, I think it's probably an okay map for showing off every factory. I mean, you have the cliffs for spiders and jump bots, you have room to set up air if you want to, you have reasonably flat ground so the vehicles are okay, but enough ramps and hills and such that there's room for cloakies and shields to do their thing. So, no, I'd say it's a pretty strong overall map, supporting pretty much every factory. 
At least in 1v1. In 3v3, I'm not so sure. 3v3, it clearly works reasonably well, but I think it might be on the small side for that. Anyway, 400 and Diamond Frame both expanded to the sides. And at this point, the is fairly even. The attempts to raid are fairly even. Nice use of Pyro there, so Rav getting in quick Pyro coming in here, because of course, and 400 with that flea, allowing them to scout out and know exactly what's going on. That Pyro is far more effective thanks to that flea, but unfortunately, there is also a Lotus there the Pyro cannot deal with. Decides to give us life to get rid of a Metal Extractor, which I am not so sure about. At the same time, though, that also distracts from the frontline mace. Distracted me from the frontline mace. Certainly distracted my the players I'm watching here. Certainly distracted fire. Well, not so much fire blight. They're directly affected. But it distracted everyone else. However, Ezride's already on there to deal with it. So the mace managing to do some damage, but not really break anything. And the power and flea managing to get rid of a couple metal extractors, but really it's slowing things down. This is more of the setup, though. I mean, 400 is able to build up and expand in the background. At the same time, the center is also being taken by 400 and Manu. Diamond is able to get their own proxy tank factory with their own metal extractors. But still, it's a slight advantage for Team 400, and that's all they really need. The reclaim is there for Team team Pluck, yes. But Team 400 has so much else to go off of that it's fine. It's working perfectly well. And yeah, the time frame pointing out the obvious. The Ravens mean that maces are nowhere near as scary as they could be. That's actually what I was saying before. Maces work reasonably well as a rush strategy in 1v1 because your opponent, if they don't go for air, they have to then fight the mace head on with skirmishers and other units. And of course, you can use that because now you force them to make skirmishers. You can basically play them like a fiddle. But in a team game, if someone goes for air, then the mace can do nothing. The bombers just kill them. So it doesn't really matter. At the same time, it looks like a bit of, a bit of Kodachi assault coming in the backyard. Didn't manage to accomplish much, but still managed to get a bit of damage in there. Managed to hold back the commander. However, Team 400 remains on top. They remain an economic advantage. And that's not likely to change anytime soon. Even with the rogues coming in here, destroying some of these metal extractors. 400 still expanded into a reasonably safe location. They've got the center still fairly on lock. I mean, the rogues are coming in slowly but surely, but that's given enough time for everything else to get in. And the rogues, however, will not be threatened by the mace. Not sure why the mace is going over here. What the heck are you doing, mace? Okay, still. Some scouting and managing to be done. But yeah, the mace, actually surprisingly, is providing a bit of a threat. The rogues are pulling back, so... Eh, successful, I suppose. Southwest, on the other hand... Oh, sorry, not Southwest. For, Team 400, on the other hand, does have the Southeast pretty well taken. And the Northwest is not being taken by Team Pluck yet, so Team Pluck actually has room to get a stronger economy than Team 400. A little bit. Mostly because the center is still under some threat and hasn't really been rebuilt to any great extent, whereas for Team Pluck, their center side is solid, or at least hasn't been assaulted yet. And that's kind of the big thing to me, is that, that's, that Team Pluck hasn't really taken a lot of pressure. They've taken a bit at the very start with the Maces, but that's it. On the other hand, Team Pluck is providing a lot of pressure. The Mace is, again, not doing so much because, again, the Ravens. And even with the Razors coming in, the Razors do not kill them fast enough. They deal some damage, and they they threaten killing them, but it's not fast enough. And now, of course, that proxy tank factory, that works fine. Get those Minotaurs up, deal some extra damage, push back your opponents, and use that to secure economy. And then in about five minutes, once you've gotten a few more Minotaurs, possibly a Cyclops, then go for the kill. That's what I expect to happen. At the same time, Team Fire Team 400 does still have options for Crab. They have options. Jump on factor, of course, they can get the Firewalkers and use that to start ripping apart all these wind generators, which are being very efficient. That's 0.8 for wind generators. Like, this is minimum This is minimum made energy per second. And it's going to go up way higher than that in a second. So energy is completely solved for Team Pluck unless this wind farm is destroyed, which that can be dealt with with Firewalkers. But at this point, it's more a matter of how much how much an army both teams have. And right now, Team Pluck does have the attrition advantage at a point where there is a very even economy and has been this entire time. So Team Pluck does have the advantage. They certainly have a positional advantage in that their tank factor is right by this expansion. Whereas the expansion over to the north, well, the center west, there was 400's commander, but it's being pulled back to help defend against the entire assault force here. The rogues and minotaurs coming around here, along with all the ravens. So the entire force coming in from, from Team Pluck along the center really isn't being pushed back all that much. I mean, Mace Halberd is going to do what it can, and the Moderator actually doing a fine job. It's putting the Minotaur in a position where it's not 
able to really deal with this stuff. But the key thing to me is, can the Halberds go back here and take care of the Rogues? If they can, then the center can be held by 400. But that's the only way I can see with the units that are currently on the board that can be... that the Team 400 has any chance of getting this match. Remember, this is the last map of the finals. So whoever wins this, wins the finals, wins the tournament. And at this point, Team Pluck is looking to be at a pretty good advantage to do so. Placeholder trying to do his job, but the Halberds are not there for the follow-up, so the Placeholder really not really not accomplishing all that much. Putting the Rogues in an awkward position, maybe make them a little more vulnerable to the Recluses. Sure, that's something. But it's not much. The Halberds could easily come in here and stop it. And at the very least, it does halt the halt the frontline assault a little bit. But that's after Team Bluck's already taken a bunch of the economy and now taken the Northwest. So Team Bluck is gonna have a 20 metal per second advantage for most of this game at this point. And that's key to me. This crab it's kind of the one thing to push things back. If that does the trick, then there is still hope for Team 400. There's their main chance to come back right now. But they've lost Southeast. The, the center east is no longer theirs. The center west has a razor has a razor and a hacksaw, but any dedicated assault will get through it. However, with the rogues dead, the halberds are coming in for a counterattack, blocking off all the pickets, completely nullifying their approach. And at this point, I mean the ravens can help, but the halberds are able to get in here. Fireblast commander under heavy threat could very well go down, and that's the center possibly being retaken. Some patience being shown there by Manu. Firepluck going in the ground, but that's fine. That still opens everything up. Actually, the Halberd might be able to take it down again. At the very least, that commander's out of commission for the time being. Does have auto repair. But the center is back in control of Team 400. That is exactly what they needed to do. If they can just get to Fireblux Commander, that would be game. But then Fireblux Commander is also being helped by, helped by that caretaker, so... Okay, now there's some hope to get rid of Fireblux Commander. But even then, it's just... Yeah, that that's fine. Still opens things up. Fireblush Commander might be a bit of a pain, but get a couple workers there, level off the terraforming, and then surround them and kill them. Oh, you don't, you don't have to. The commander is just stuck there. We saw it before. Commander being stuck by an enemy line is not a good thing to have happen. So Team 400, still behind in economy, but they could rebuild over here. If they get some good anti-air set up, they could stop basically anything from coming into that southeast expansion. The center expansion is being retaken. One metal extractor left with a bit of trouble to deal with it, but... I. Are there air forces here? No, they're not air forces. Never mind. There's no butt. Honestly, 400. Get, get an airplane factory. Get up. Get an airplane factory. Get a raven or two. Get rid of the commander. Get rid of this metal extractor. Or send in some workers to level the terraform. Either way, I doesn't really matter. Just something. Heck, as it is though, Team 400 is still able to just bypass Fireblast Commander. No real line of defense apart from Fireblast Commander was available. And with these halberds just completely let loose, not really sure what to be done here. I mean, the halberds just need to stop firing. Just stop firing. Hold fire should be good. Oh, no, they need to be on hold fire. They're not on hold fire. They're on fire at will. That is, that is not good. Well, actually does manage to get rid of most of the ravens and not lose too much in the process. So that actually works. Oh, wait, did Fireblock try to... They tried to... Oh, that was going on. They're trying to bury the crab. Like, seriously? They're spiders. They can walk up cliff walls. They don't care. I'm not really sure what the point of that is. I am sure the point of this iris is, though. Really nullify the range advantage of those skirmishing units, allowing the mace to get in and deal this damage. Fortunately, not quite enough that all the rogues did completely converge on that mace beforehand. But still, clever strategy. Still more maces left. Still room for the iris to do... Or, sorry, cornea. It's not an iris yet. Still room for it to do its job, though. Not to mention the fact that units can actually get around this Cyclops. Start ripping it to pieces, too, without taking much damage. But again, the problem is the Cyclops just has so much HP, it doesn't even really matter. And the Crab's not in a position to deal with that. Again, this is possibly the game changer. Now, at the same time, there's one more Cyclops here, and the Tank Factory is pretty heavily attacked, but not heavily enough. A couple of moderators won't be enough. The Pyros would have been if they survived, but the Lotus is just making sure that doesn't happen. On top of the Ravens. So while a great shot at the center in reclaiming all of that has been accomplished, still it's not quite enough when you consider all the rest of the stuff that's been here. Like, yeah, the center's been destroyed, the northwest's been destroyed. A lot of good assault here, but Team Pluck is still ahead. They have the reclaim, they're taking it, they have 
the tank factory with the Cyclops is being built up, and they're making good use of that. So, while I like the cleverness, I like the use of the cornea, I like the use of basically all these forces. I really like the use of the chainsaw here, honestly. I like that, but I don't see it as being enough quite yet. It's pretty good for stabilization. And I like the fact that the airplane factory is there. Okay, this is stabilization. The airplane factory is the shot at taking the game back. That's Team 400's approach. Get the airplane factory, get some ravens, or get some get some phoenixes or something. Or maybe just get a bunch of swifts and raptors. Do what they did in the last couple games. Just get the air control and then win. I mean, it worked in Red Comet. Might, maybe it'll work here. So if that works, then it's an option. But it's hard to say. Because... Not a whole lot has been done here for Team 400 to build up. They're mostly focusing on getting very large units, getting a couple of power. Well, again, the power is not so much. Getting the crabs, getting the airplane factory, and where is the rest of their money being spent? I guess in defenses, they aren't really managing to do too much. Oh, wait a sec. Are there lances? I don't see any lances. Never mind. I don't see the remains of lances. For a second, the lances were up, but no, they aren't. And this is it, the Cyclops, second Cyclops coming in here. No lances are built into defending against this. I think that's going to be it. Because the Rosa Lance certainly didn't accomplish much, and I do not see its corpse anywhere. And the Cyclops isn't even going to go down. It's still got 1,000 HP. It's still fine. So yeah, Team Pluck turning that Cyclops into a very effective, very, basically a game-winning strategy. Because that's the thing, Cyclops is the... That's the game-winning strategy, right, in this version. In the current version, it's not. It got nerfed heavily. Like, it doesn't have the slow beam anymore, and its shot doesn't deal anywhere near as much damage. So, it's been pretty heavily tuned, but not as of this game. And as of this game, that does give Fire Team Pluck probably the game, I think. Yeah, Manu is... Well, Manu's out. 400. I'm not sure what, what are they planning. What are you not quite over? What what do you have up your sleeve? As a spectator, I don't see anything. There's a crab, which is trying its best, but otherwise, no. This is kind of it. So that's not going to be it. Oh, that's that was, that was the commander D gun. I didn't even see. I'm not used to commanders having D guns. That, that noise sounds wrong. Ah, commander. Okay. Yeah, they must have had just the straightforward D-Gun, like the straight damage stuff. But, no. Didn't manage to do anything, and that is... That is game. So, that is game, that is tournament, that is Team Pluck taking first place. Fire Pluck, Dying Front, and Izzeride winning the Renegade 3v3 tournament with Cyclopses for days. Also, some really smart play on Super Speed Metal, but mostly Cyclopses for days. So, I hope you enjoyed that. That was that was the tournament as it happened a week and a half or a week and a bit ago. So, thank you all for watching and thanks to Shaman for organizing the tournament in the first place and all the players for having played. But until next time, that is going to be it. Probably until next week, we'll see. That's going to be it for now. So, again, thanks for watching and have a good night everyone.